The 3D printing revolution is here, and if you thought it was all knickknacks and wobbly dinosaurs, think again, because I've got five practical prints that will make your workshop a more productive and better place to be. This is Making for Motorsport. Welcome along guys, today we're talking practical 3D prints. Now I'm fairly new to 3D printing. I used to be a cynic, I didn't think you could do anything functional with them, but boy was I wrong. Now you might be thinking the same thing, so I've got five 3D prints here that I'm gonna print and demonstrate to show you that a 3D printer is as essential as a welder in the modern workshop. And if you've already got one, well hold tight because these are five prints that you are going to want to print straight away. So let's get into it. Number one. Dimple Die by Lone Wolf 55337. Let's face it, dimples are cool. And I'm not talking about these, I'm talking about these. They give a serious motorsport look to a car, and not only is the panel lighter, but it's also stiffer. And who doesn't like things a little bit stiffer? These dimple dies were printed in PLA, 30% infill gyroid pattern, so plenty of room to go up on the material and just watch them boss the metal about. No problems at all. If you don't have a press, you can use a vise. If you don't have a vise, you can use a bolt. So this is the aluminium saw, one mil, not that challenging. But check this out, one mil steel. Yes, you can go out and buy the hardened steel ones, but you know you're never gonna have the right size. And if you need a new size in these, you just print another. If it wears out or breaks, you print another. Need it a bit stronger? Print it, print it with more infill. This is the future, boys. Serious Clamp It Square by J-Max. Now when you're making something, squares appear to defy logic and physics. No matter how many you've got, you never have enough and you can never find them. So search no more, just print them. Now this one from J Max is a seriously smart one. So 3D printed in PLA with 30% infill is plenty stiff enough and it's got some seriously clever design features. So these holes you can clamp through, it's got some large screws there so you can screw it down to a board. So it's perfect for wrangling tree carcasses if that's your thing. If you prefer a bit of metal work, well, you can use it for tacking up, but maybe don't get it too hot. Okay, so fireball tool have got nothing to worry about here. It's not going to really replace your heavy duty fabrication square, but it can help you out in a pinch. And if you haven't got one, hey, it's better than no square. Now, where did I put it? Where's it gone? So if you're new to all this, you're probably thinking, David, I can't 3D model, so I can't 3D print. Well. There's no need. All of these models are freely available on Thingiverse. So you can just download them, slice them, and print them. All the links will be in the description down below. And best of all, they're all free. My favorite kind of price. Right then, on to number three. Vice Press Brake Tools by Bronze CNC. If you want to fold some metal, a vice mounted press brake is a very easy way of doing it accurately and neatly but they're expensive and there's lots of different types and lots of different sizes. So why not print them? These are cheap. So cheap, in fact, I didn't even buy the magnets. Just a dab of hot glue and it did the job perfectly. So these are in PLA. Again, 30% infill on gyroid. So I thought I'd make something. So I've got this pattern and put it in the press brake to make a little pan. So folding up the first side it's a joy to use. I'm going quite slowly. These, these are sped up because ain't no one got time to watch me work. But you go slowly, you make sure you've got the angle right, position right, and you can do some really high quality work. It's quite useful to print them narrower. So if you want to do long ones, you can do. So you just move it backwards and forwards. But because it's narrow, it gets in between the sides that you've already folded up, which can be a problem with the kind of traditional metal folders, or even if you'd printed a bigger one. And that's it, a completed pan. It's, uh, it's, it's a very pretty thing. It's only in one, one mil aluminium, so not the biggest challenge, but it's very pretty. 
but it's not just aluminium it can do. Look at it bend the one mil steel. Again, only 30% infill, so there's lots of room to go up on the print infill and go thicker on the steel. So when you're printing these, you just need to pay attention to what orientation you're printing them in. Don't print them like this, print them like this. Ask me how I know. So these designs were done by Braun CNC. So he's got his own YouTube channel. He does some great stuff with CNC's and a bit of 3D printing. Go check him out, but not yet. Two more prints to go. Drill bit sharpening block with relief angle by Paolo 68. So if you're anything like me, you tend to break things and then throw nothing away just in case it's useful later. So you've probably got a box or two or three of blunt and burnt out drill bits hanging around. So they just need sharpening. But that's a skill and it's a skill you should learn. But until then, Paolo 68 has you covered with this, a drill sharpening rig. So this strange angular block has got a hole through the middle for the, bit, for the bits to go and all these angles equate to the correct tip angle and relief angle for drill bits. So the drill bit goes through the middle and then you offer it up to the side of the grinding wheel. Once the drill is ground flush back to the block, you spin it over and grind back the other side. And voila, a perfectly dressed drill bit. It's no substitute for hours spent at the grinding wheel learning the skills for life, except it is. So I used it on this 10 mil bit. It went from blunt to sharp. Look at that, like a hot knife through PLA. Ah, the forbidden cheese twirls. Right, I've saved the best till last. 3 16 inch tube straightener by MJ McPherson. Anyone who's built a car knows that crisp lines and attention to detail make all the difference, especially on brake pipes. So for straight lines, you need straight pipe. And they sell it in coils. Up steps, wrench and chill. With this, the 3 16 tube straightener, also known as the 3D printed brake line straightener. So it uses 3D printed wheels that ride on the skateboard bearings. They're pennies, you can pick them up virtually anywhere with some nice stiff brackets. And I don't need to talk about it, they've got their own YouTube channel, go check them out. They're doing some lovely things with some Z cars. It does take quite some assembly because there are a lot of parts. I'm, we're not used to that with 3D printing, but hey, it's less than an engine, so you guys shouldn't have any problems with it at all. Let's see what it makes of this. Now this isn't normal copper pipe, this is the Cooper Nickel Kuna for stuff, which is tough. So, let's put it in. Aha. Aha. <laughs> Look at that. Well, if you can't see it, but I am straight as a die. Ooh. I'm keeping this. Okay guys, they're my top five practical 3D prints for the workshop and garage. Hopefully you found something interesting and useful in there if you've already got a 3D printer and if you haven't, well, go out and get one. And if you're not convinced, let me know in the comments, kind of what's it gotta do to prove its value for you to go out and get one. 3D printed inlet manifold? I don't know. But if you like the sound of that, then hit subscribe because that's one of the projects amongst many others we're gonna do here at Making for Motorsport. So in the meantime, keep your prints practical and catch you later.